Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, we will pick up where we left in the last class. We were talking about the role of the zeolites or zeolites uh, in terms of uh, leading to the catalytic cracking. So, if you just recap what essentially happens, say for example, you have a zeolite molecule is something like you know something like this and which has a small pores out here all over the place okay sometimes they are very uniform pore certain situation they are a non uniform pore depending on their the size of the pore these could be used for you know purifying certain group of molecules which bigger than that will not pass through and smaller than that will pass through so, now if this is a zeolite molecule and here you have you are putting the bio oil through it, okay. now within it what happened the oil molecules get trapped into those small pores. Okay. So, essentially what you are doing is, so these dots are showing that the water, uh, sorry the oil molecules are getting trapped. So, what you are having essentially is as if there are small reactor vessels. It is a strategy which is also followed when people does reverse micelle synthesis, when they make nanoparticles, what they do? They try to make micellar structures, it is something like this, just an analogy I am using it for you. Say for example, you wanted to build. so when people does reverse micelle and those kind of synthesis, what you do, you have these micellar structures, micelles are basically hydrophobic structures, on them you are having those different kind of nanomaterial what you want to synthesize, likewise, which is an analogy, very similar analogy like you know reverse micelle method or micellar synthesis likewise. Okay. So, that is how you kind of you know separate out the nanoparticles in small micelle. So, they act individual micelle act as a small reactor vessel. Following the same analogy out here what is happening? Your oil molecules are getting trapped in it and there are some bigger ones, some smaller ones likewise. And now, you expose this to high temperature. high temperature and high pressure. In this situation what will happen? Each one of those small pockets what you see out here, say for example, these are individual reaction vessels, just what I showed you as an analogy of the reverse micelle. And out here it leads to breaking down of the long hydrocarbon chains. The reason being, since you are confining the reaction in a small volume, in a small space. So, the amount of collision which will be taking place between the molecules will be significantly higher as compared to when you are doing the reaction in a bulk or in a large vessel. Just think of it, if you want to boil water in a large vessel, the amount of energy it will be needed, the amount of collision which will be much more lesser as compared to if you want to reduce the vessel size and let it be very teeny tiny or is a little very finite amount of molecules are there and they are continuously colliding with each other and the amount of heat which will be generated because of those nano confinement will be much more higher because of the 
molecular collision among each other. Okay. So, this is where this whole process which leads to the breaking down of uh, this long hydrocarbon chain in these zeolite structure what we call as catalytic cracking. This was one of the tail piece of the previous class where I was talking about catalytic cracking. So, I wanted to give you a, a visual feel of how the catalytic cracking is taking place. So, just to talk about zeolites are we used for catalytic cracking of the biofuels or bio oils in order to increase their efficiency. So, we will come about this efficiency how we measure the efficiency. Now, going back in the previous class if you people remember we talked about a particular table layout. So, we talked about when you have the bio oils what are the transformations we are doing. Okay. One transformation what we do is we talked about the hydrogenation reaction. Okay. So, what essentially is an hydrogenation reaction? So, just to give you a brief idea it is something like just I am giving you the most simplest example say for example, you have CH 2 and CH 2 double bonded okay. and you are adding hydrogen to it. In other word you are reducing it even further you will get something like this CH 3 and CH 3. Okay. So, now such reaction can take place at a temperature around 200 degree centigrade and in the presence at, at a pressure which will be higher than normal. So, P stands for pressure and using different kind of metallic catalyst. Okay. Metallic catalyst which are used and one of the prominent catalyst which is used is nickel. You can use platinum, you can use palladium. So, you remember nickel I talked to you about the discovery of nickel in 1756 by the Swedish uh, geologist. And in the laboratory condition sometimes they use something called a Rane nickel. Rane nickel is essentially an alloy of nickel and aluminum alloy. Okay. So, this is how the hydrogenation is being done and hydrogenation leads to if you remember in the last class we talked about hydrogenation leads to the two things you are getting naphtha and I told you that I will talk later about this naphtha and diesel. So, naphtha and diesel these are considered as low octane ratings. So, what is this octane rating and what is diesel and naphtha. Okay. So, talking about naphtha, naphtha is essentially it is a say flammable liquid hydrocarbon mixture. So, that is essentially what naphtha is. So, so this is flammable. So, it is basically a liquid fuel flammable liquid hydrocarbon mixture. Okay. Hydrocarbon mixture that is what is naphtha is all about. And uh, while following this we talked about the other route which is underneath I am showing now. We talked about using the zeolites and using zeolites we have two routes one is for refining and another one is for conversion. Okay. Refining and the other one is for conversion and I have already talked to you about the conversion, but here I will talk something else. While I was writing conversion you must have seen I put something called olefinic gas, what is olefinic gas? Okay. So, olefinic gas by definition are basically any class of unsaturated open chain hydrocarbon ha having any class of having one double bond at least one double bond any class of uh, 
unsaturated class of unsaturated open chain hydrocarbon with at least one single bond, one single double bond, one, at least one single double bond. Okay. So, this stands for double, okay. one single double bond. Okay. Now, if you see the chart, if you remember in the last class, if you look at it very carefully, we talked about that these two leads to something called high octane gasoline, high octane gasoline and fuel cell, fuel oil. Now, while looking at this whole thing, you may realize there are few words which are coming new to you, which I have not discussed in the last class and I told you in the next class I am going to discuss it. So, the first new word which is coming, what we have discussed was naphtha, we have already discussed about this. Diesel is another fuel which has low octane number. So, this is a word which we have not discussed, what is octane number. Okay? Then we talked about something out here which is high octane gasoline and fuel oils what are these and how we can understand it and we have talked about the olefinic gases okay? and we have already talked about the hydrogenation. Okay. So, now in order to understand what are these concept of octane number, now we will draw, I will draw your attention to the concept of octane number, what is really an octane number. So, octane number. A basic understanding of octane number is very critical. So, going by the definition if you talk about what is an octane number or octane rating. So, sometime you will see octane number or it is call also called octane rating. Okay. And there is a common unit which is used for that, it is called R O N. This is the most uh, simplistic expression of octane number, which is called research octane number. And if you go in a petrol pump, you will see some of these numbers, which is basically the octane number. So, if you this is a common sight you will see. I'm just putting it and whenever next time you go, you just have a look at it. So, it will be written like you know regular one will have 87 plus will have 89. So, the numbers could vary 92 and then you will get something like high octane fuel. If you have traveled outside the country, this is very common. Here also you will see in several gas stations, you will have these kind of things which are mentioned. But then what is really octane number is all about. So, in order to explain this, we will have to go to some of the very basics of the engines, because that will help us to understand what we meant by high octane fuel, what we meant by low octane fuel. So, in order to understand it, I believe all of you have done the basics up to standard 10 in science. So, I will use just that knowledge for you to explain the basic architecture of the engines and from there, once the basic architecture of the engine is clear, it will be very easy for me to explain what does that octane number means. So, all of you travel, many of you are having different kind of vehicles, maybe electric vehicle, we will not talk about that today or a diesel vehicle or a petrol vehicle. So, what is the basic difference between the two? So, there are scooters where 
many of you have taken out the spark plug and you have cleaned the spark plug and yet there are <coughs> vehicles where you do not need a spark plug, okay, they function in a different way. So, most of these fuel engines or gasoline based engines are of two categories. So, today we will be first of all talk about the different kind of engines. So, either you will have engines which are called as spark ignition engine okay, or you will have compression ignition engine. compression ignition engine and uh, just for your knowledge let me put it there most of the spark ignition engine uses petrol whereas compression ignition engine uses diesel but let's understand the basics first what are these two word what is meant what tell talks about spark ignition and compression ignition. So, when we talk about ignition means you are firing up something, you are igniting, igniting fire or something. Okay. So, all of you burst crackers, all of you switch on the gas. So, in order to switch on the gas what you do? You just use the lighter or a match stick and ignite the gas. Right? You can do the same thing with the crackers, you just ignite the cracker and it burst. So, this word is clear to you what is meant by spark ignition, but there is another word here. This is what is talking about spark. So, there is another word which is called a compression ignition. So, in terms of the compression ignition, what we are talking about? So, as if you are compressing something, compress means you are you know bringing something compressing. So, if something you are compress, if you compress it ignites. Okay. So, these are the basic, we will we'll draw the whole schematics to make you understand. So, first of all just by looking at the word you should be able to understand spark means for ignition you have to use a spark, for ignition when you have you are compressing of something that is called compressed ignition. Okay. So, now let us talk about first about the and regarding the compression ignition let me put this name what you see diesel is actually not a fuel it is after a gentleman called Rudolf Diesel who is the father of a form of engine which follows compression ignition and that is why it is called diesel engines okay which use diesel so it is not it is a name of an individual he was a german and he was the one who for the first time proposed and developed what we call as diesel engine of today where most of the trucks buses cars suvs they run on diesel engine it was after this gentleman rudolf diesel okay so now let's talk about the basic architecture of these engines, because that will help you to understand what kind of bio oil you are using and where you can use and what are the improvements you have to do. So, in terms of the spark ignition engine, so it is something like this. So, it is the most simplistic way I am going to show it, it is fairly technical, but do not worry about it. Okay. So, this is a cylinder what I am just drawing okay. and then here you have it's a spark ignition okay okay so this is essentially the spark plug okay and underneath you have, you all have, have seen inside the scooter, the old scooters what you have. You will see a spark plug like this and on the side you have something like, okay, there is a, coming like this 
and so if you consult any other places you will see a lot of complex drawings i'm just trying to make it very simple for you so that it kind of so there is a valve out here what i'm showing in green okay so this is the spark plug and this is the red color what you see out here this is the spark plug okay so you, you you'll see the spark happening here now what you have is okay now from here what you see this valves the step one so this is a spark plug based valve okay step one so this is the inlet for a mixture of air and fuel air plus fuel mixture so the first step what happens this valve one v1 valve one opens okay the plunger opens and there is an intake of the mixture air fuel and as it mixes that's so what do you see it moves down okay somewhere out here once it moves down what will happen so this whole place will be now filled with the mixture okay so this is step 1 just now i did okay so the step 1 is intake valve opens so this is the intake valve opening of intake valve step 1 followed by step 2 air plus fuel mixture moves in and that leads to intake stroke why it is called intake stroke because this plunger this is moving down okay it moved down like this okay so this is the first step the piston is moving down so here is a piston which is moving down so now this whole vessel is the cylindrical vessel it's a cylindrical vessel out here is filled with the air fuel mixture so now the next thing what happens is step 2 from here is where this piston starts to move backward so it has come down now this piston is going backward like this okay so this backward movement of the piston so what you are essentially doing out here now you are pushing this pushing this back like this like this so the piston is going up so in a small area now you are concentrating the so all your mixture is now concentrated in this small area so now the plunger is back out here okay for the piston is back out there so now what you do so this is called your second step which is the followed by upward stroke or compression stroke it is also called compression stroke because you are compressing the gas compressing the mixture okay or the fuel compression stroke this is stop this is step 2 where you are doing the compression stroke now in this zone now follow here in this zone it is all a compressed mixture this compressed mixture is now ignited by the spark plug step 3 is being ignited 
by the spark plug. So, having said this, try to visualize the situation what is happening. So, you have a cylinder in front of you. So, it is filled with your fuel. Now, you are pushing it from the bottom like this, you are pushing it like that, you are compressing it. So, while you are compressing it, you are bringing these fuel plus air molecules much more closer and it, this will lead to a lot of thermal agitation between these molecules. Huge amount of heat will be generated because they are in close proximity. Just imagine you have 1000 people who are this much distance apart. Now, you are pushing those 1000 people in a smaller room. What will happen? Those 1000 people will be fighting with each other, they will be almost close into each other. Okay. There will be much more collision between them. That is exactly what happens when they are going up and this will generate a lot of heat. And in that situation, if you push the spark plug switch on, there is a slight spark, this will really burn the fuel. It is inside it what will happen now followed by once. So, if this is your step 1 is going on, so this is your step 2 going on, this is your ignited by the spark plug, then the fourth thing what will happen will be spark plug ignited the spark plug and in the compressed mixture and this will it will burn explosively. Okay. This burning what we will do is it will force this piston. Now, because now see this was the size, so it came back and spark and this will generate a lot of gas and lot of fuel and that explosion will allow the piston to come down. So, next step what will happen? This piston which has gone from top to bottom step 1, the next it went back as a compression stroke, now will again come down because now this whole place will be filled with burned fuels. Once it comes down, that is called the power stroke. Okay. That is that is called the power stroke which is. So, piston step 1 piston coming down filling the whole tube or the cylinder with air and fuel mixture. Piston going up compressing the air and the fuel mixture spark plug ignites leads to an explosion by default the piston comes down while it comes down that is called the power stroke. So, how many stroke we did talked about? We talked about intake stroke step 1, upward stroke or compression stroke step 2 followed by something called a power stroke. Okay. Now, after the power stroke there is a four thing which happens here that is exhaust stroke. So, as of now what we talked about was only this port from where the air and the fuel mixture entered, but there is another one out here which is basically taking out the exhaust. So, basically burned gas or anything which comes out through this and out here this valve opens, once this valve opens it throws away. So, this is the exhaust stroke or you can call this if this is the first stroke and fourth, this is the fourth stroke. So, what you see there are four motions which happens. So, the first step was in the reaction vessel there is an intake of the fuel and the air mixture and that pushes the piston downward step 1 like from top bottom right. Then you pushes the piston upward in order to compress the air and fuel mixture in a very small volume. So, initially if the volume was 10 you are almost shrinking it down to 1 cubic centimeter which is what we want to explain. Okay. Now, you spark, spark it 
using the spark plug, ignite it using the spark plug. Once you do so, the next thing which happen, it leads to an explosion in the chamber which pushes the piston down automatically, which is the third time piston is coming making a movement. First down, second up compression, then again down because of the power stroke and the fourth that exhaust the exhaust the gas which is formed because of the combustion happening inside the because of the ignition which is done by the spark plug throws away that gas through the second valve which was there on your right hand side and that is called the exhaust stroke. So, essentially there are four strokes which happen here. So, this is how most of the petrol vessel or petrol vehicles function. Thank you.